What was most striking to me is how much political party participation was there in those, those few last days before the election. There was such excitement at the political rallies that took place before what was deemed this day of silence. And in that day of silence, which is the, the day before the actual elections, um, there was an emphasis that Tunisians did not need to be bombarded by, you know, political party campaigns and last minute calls and, you know, all these banners throughout their communities that they actually needed that time to reflect on the candidate that would represent them. What, I, what, what struck me about that period of silence was also not only the reflection about who they picked, but that this process had come upon them. And it was evident when we had uh, inspected the polling places that uh, not only were, the, were they in place, the staffing, the military was there, but there was a sense of almost honor uh, that they were actually going to embark upon this idea of an election. While it was very clear the way the stations were divided, the polling stations were divided, that youth were not showing out in as large of numbers, clearly, uh, as those over 40. You know, the over 40 lines were extremely long and the youth lines were extremely short. However, young people were the face of the polling centers and every polling center um, that I walked in. I think if there was a, a moment where the Tunisians really wanted to emphasize the transparency, um, if there was so one singular moment that could capture that, it was in the counting process. And you and I both know that it was long, uh, in many ways very tedious, um, but it was very deliberate in the sense that here they were showing the ballots to every single participant who was locked into that room, almost mechanically so, um, and yet shown that this was, in fact, the ballot. And so it's, it's, it strikes me that in our own position, we often forget that the election is a means to an end, and that now the, the idea of governance remains for the Tunisians. And Samuel Huntington once made the argument uh, that you had to have two consecutive election cycles in order to basically be considered an infant democracy. And Tunisia has overcome, technically, now with its uh, second election, uh, that hurdle. But it seems to me that it's almost with bated breath that they now look to the presidential election. That what's coming in the next, you know, six months is a continued commitment to that inclusive and participatory process. What you saw was uh, people who wanted to be close to the polling stations, people who, who demonstrated incredible professionalism. And even in the, in the car rides with our interpreters, there was an enthusiasm not only to the idea that this election meant something, but the preparation that it took almost envisages a, a better sense of governance for the country. So as I look at it uh, in stark contrast to many of the other countries that we've witnessed in the region, this really holds a lot of promise.